Hi, I'm Mike Scott, a Senior Technical Product Manager with VMware SD-WAN and SASE. Today I'd like to talk about a new feature we've introduced in our 5.1 software version called Hover Cluster Interconnect. Before we talk about the feature itself, I'd like to provide a little bit of context around hubs and clusters for those who may be new to VMware SD-WAN. For simplicity and scalability, VMware SD-WAN is fundamentally based on a hub-and-spoke architecture with advanced features like dynamic branch-to-branch -branch tunnels addressing on-demand and any-to-any -any reachability. So what exactly are hubs? Hubs are natural aggregation points in a customer network that multiple remote locations need to access and can be an on-premises data center, headquarters, cloud-hosted, um, uh, and infrastructure service providers. Uh, a spoke or branch location can be configured to connect uh, to one or more uh, hubs via SD-WAN overlay. The hub may be a single physical or virtual device, a pair of devices deployed active standby for redundancy purposes, or a cluster. Next, let's talk about clusters. What are clusters? A cluster is a horizontal scaling mechanism used to address the operational limits of a single edge in terms of bandwidth and overlay tunnels. Up to eight edges may be placed into a single cluster. A cluster is functionally treated as an individual hub from the perspective of other edges, and spoke sites are assigned to one member of the cluster, and if that member fails, the spoke site will be dynamically reassigned. Now that we've introduced some of the context around hubs and clusters, let's talk about the Hubber Cluster Interconnect feature. Basically, Hubber Cluster Interconnect allows hub clusters to be configured with a hub-spoke relationship to one another. It introduces a fundamental change in the SD-WAN routing protocol that allows packets to traverse more than one overlay hop in the network. This allows spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication between remote locations that don't share a common hub. Prior to the release of Hub and Cluster Interconnect, only hubs that consisted of a single device or HA pair could be configured as hubs to one another. The reason for this limitation was twofold. First, we needed to create a mechanism to address the potential tunnel scale of interconnecting multiple clusters, each with multiple edges in each cluster. Second, we needed to add overlay, overlay routing logic to prevent routing loops and limit the control plane overhead of redundant route advertisements. And so these things are exactly what we addressed with this feature. Let's take a moment to discuss some of the ways this feature may be useful. First, it allows branch locations to use clustering for scale. Prior to 5.1, only hub sites could use clustering due to the routing limitations I mentioned before. It also enables the creation of a hierarchical network of hubs and clusters peering to one another. A major benefit is hybrid multi-cloud support. Since the cloud doesn't support Layer 2, virtual SD-WAN edges must be deployed as a cluster to achieve redundancy. In the past, this prevented an on-prem cluster from acting as a hub or a spoke to a cloud-hosted cluster. Next, I'd like to show a quick demo of how this is configured in the VMware SD-WAN orchestrator. This represents a high-level overview of the demo architecture. It consists of three clusters hosted in different cloud providers. Clusters 1 and 2 have three edges in the cluster and are in AWS and Azure, respectively. Cluster 3 has two edges and is hosted in Google Cloud. Each cluster has a remote branch site using it as a hub. Moving to the orchestrator, edges and clusters are configured, deployed, and activated the same as they were before the hub or cluster interconnect feature was introduced. Let's re review the configuration now. Since all three clusters are configured the same way, I'm going to focus on the configuration of cluster one. So one of the first things you want to do is come to network services and create a new cluster. So we're going to go to clusters and hubs. You can see here I've already got cluster one configured and there's three edges assigned to it. Um, you can create a cluster first uh, without assigning edges to it for the purposes of configuration and then assign one or more edges to it later as they come online. Let's look at cluster one. So you can see here um, I've got my three edges that I've configured and um, spun up in Azure East and then I've assigned those to this cluster. Um, you can see that there's some other, uh, my edges are available here. These are branch edges so I don't want to assign them to the cluster. One thing I wanted to mention also that we've added for uh, routing efficiency is the ability to do some limited summarization within the scope of the cluster. So if the IP address scheme supports it, you can do route summarization at a cluster level and prevent more exact routes from being advertised in favor of a summarized route. So one thing I do want to point out is that you're going to need a separate profile for each cluster. And I'll show you the reason for that now. I'm going to use the cluster one profile. In VMware SD-WAN, profiles are basically like templates. It's a way to um, replicate uh, 
configuration that you're going to need to apply to multiple sites. You can override portions of the configuration at an individual site if necessary. So coming here to what we call Cloud VPN, you can see that what I've done here in Cluster 1 is I've assigned Cluster 2 and Cluster 3 as hubs as well as branch-to-branch -branch hubs in the profile. So the profiles for the other clusters will obviously point to um, you know, the other remaining clusters. So for example, Cluster 2 will point to Cluster 1 and 3, etc. The final thing to do in the configuration once you have the profiles uh, configured under Cloud VPN is you want to come here to under VPN services within the profile and click on hub or cluster interconnect and then click enable. That's it. Once you have that done, then the feature is enabled and hub clusters are peering with one another. Now that the feature is enabled, we can go to the monitor tab and we can look at uh, one of the edges in a cluster. We'll just pick, I'll pick the first one here. So this is cluster one and edge one that's uh, it's homed into uh, Azure E, so I'll expand this column here so we can get a better view of what that looks like. Um, if we go to the Paths tab, you can see that um, not only do I have, um, from this particular edge within the cluster in Azure, I have overlay paths to our cloud-hosted gateways. I also have uh, different overlay paths established to different members of other clusters as well. Now that we've gone over the configuration of the existing uh, lab clusters, let's uh, go through the configuration of what it takes to actually stage a new cluster. So the first thing we're going to do is come to Network Services, explore uh, clusters and hubs here, and we're going to add a new cluster. The edges displayed here are just uh, edges in the configuration. These are our branch edges that haven't been assigned to any cluster. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, give this a name and we'll save it without adding any edges to it at this time. We'll come back and add edges to it later. The next thing we want to do is create a profile for our cluster. I'm going to duplicate the quick start profile here just to save some time. We'll call it a demo profile and click create. The next thing we want to do is go to the device tab and come down here to VPN services and enable cloud VPN. Let's expand that. We want to enable branch to branch hubs. We want to enable branch to branch VPN. And we want to use hubs for branch to branch. Finally, we want to disable dynamic branch to branch because dynamic branch to branch currently is unsupported with hub and cluster interconnect. Next, let's scroll down, enable hub or cluster interconnect and save the profile again. The next step is to create edges to go into our new cluster. So we'll stage a couple edge configs. We'll do the first one, we'll call this edge one demo cluster. And we'll make it a virtual edge. We'll assign it our demo profile, give it a license, and then we'll go ahead and add that edge. Come back here, we'll add a second edge. Make it virtual. And create. Now that we have our two demo edges staged, we can go back to network services and add them to the cluster we created. So we go under SD-WAN destinations, we go to cluster and hub and we click on the demo cluster. Now you can see here that the two demo edges that we staged the configuration for are now visible in, uh, in the choices for what we want to add to this cluster. So we'll save changes and that's it. So as soon as these edges get activated and come online, they'll join their cluster and then based on the configuration of the profile, they'll make connections to the other clusters that they're supposed to be connected to. So we configured the demo cluster to uh, be a hub to um, cluster one and cluster two. So the last step in the configuration would be to come into cluster one and cluster two's profile and do the same config and point it to uh, the demo cluster. So you'd come in here, you'd select the demo cluster, you'd move it over, and then you'd save that configuration. So that brings us to the end of the demo. I hope you found this useful seeing how easy it is to set up clusters and peer them to one another.
If you'd like more information on Hub or Cluster Interconnect or any of the other topics we discussed in this video, here are some links which will be included in the description below. This concludes the demo. Thank you for watching.